as far as national notoriety, don't know, you know, Charlotte like a side chick. Mm-hmm. Up until a year or two ago, people used to come here and leave and be like, where was I a week ago? Mm-hmm. Oh, I was in North Carolina. Not even Charlotte, just North Carolina. It's just like CIAA made it like, no, I love Charlotte. Charlotte. Now it's getting to that again. Like, oh no, I love Charlotte. Charlotte lit right now. Yeah. You know, we lit around this bitch it really right is. now. It brought but me out, man. CIAA was that for the city. And they need to, they need to come back. Bring it back to the crib, goddammit. What to do, everybody? And thanks for tuning in to the Day by Day podcast for your Day by Day broadcast. I'm your host, Day. What I, not a why, do not X, Y. And today, I have a great one for y'all. 704 Charlotte. We in the building. Let's do it. Born and raised, Charlotte, exit four, Nation Ford. We got my dog, we got content creator, we got artists, we got overall just a great vibe and a great dude. Ghost, man, Let's what do it, it do. Appreciate you for having me, Jesus. Appreciate you for pulling up, man. Yeah, this this was sure. a long time coming, but we, we made it happen. Bro, I've been, from the day I found your page, I've mm-hmm. been like, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just be cool, you know what I'm saying? Just pray, bro. Ask me to come up this bitch one day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was only, it was only right. We talked about yeah. this before, but moving forward, I only want to bring people up on here that I'm interested in. Yeah. And I've been, I've been peeping your content for a little minute, your music for a little minute, and I'm like, yo, he got a dope vibe to him. Like, I, I just sensed that it would be a great showing if he came on here, and I know exactly. Yeah, uh, you know uh, that it is going to be just that. So it, it only facts. makes sense. It yeah, only facts. makes sense. Yeah. And uh, born and raised in Charlotte, correct? Not quite. I okay. was born on an army base. Okay. Uh, but I came here immediately after. Like yeah. my mom was discharged from the army, uh-huh. so I came right back home. Both sides of families from here. Like my mm-hmm. entire, you know, I'm one of those really deeply, deeply rooted. Charlotte, Charlotte guys, but I was technically born on an army base in San Antonio. Okay. Yeah. So what mom, um what part of Charlotte? Southside. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nations Ford. Yeah. Archdale. Exit four, man. Yeah, shout sir. out to Lady Remedy. Yeah. Get a shout second. out Lady Remedy. Yeah. Long live Kelly. Mm-hmm. You know how that shit go, man. Long Absolutely. live Prince Charlotte. Long live all the guys, Terrell Jones, Tevin Massey. We ain't even going, you know. Straight up, straight up. Yeah, get yeah, a second person from uh Nations Ford to come on in. So that's dope. Yeah, you know that I mean? is dope. When you yeah. ju- when you just showed me you had you had Chantel on here, her, she go by it's yeah, Lady yeah, Remedy. Yeah, no yeah, disrespect. Yeah, yeah. Like that meant so much. You feel yeah. me? Like I could barely even listen to her talk because it because it was like I didn't know she did podcasts and interviews, and uh-huh. I'm just, I was just so interested in how y'all even connected yeah. because she is one of them. One, she the heart of where I'm from. Yeah, she literally the heart of where I'm from. I could feel that and when we were talking, bro. If she pop out and say it's going like this, it's going like that. Mm. If she pop out and say somebody did this to her, mm-hmm. it's going like that. You yeah. know, it's going to get resolved. It's like she. She that, you know yeah, what I mean? Like, yeah, shout yeah. out, shout out to her. Yeah, and her story was dope. Her story, man. That was one of like the first episodes I did. So make sure that y'all tune into that one. Like that was really a good episode, mm-hmm. like for real. So shout out to her. Um, all right. So I'm I'm from Maryland. I'm yeah. not from Charlotte. I moved out here three years ago. I want to talk about something, not just Charlotte, but the North Carolina yeah. in general that pisses me off. Oh man. If I could be don't quite say, frank with don't you. Don't say it. If I, it's, it's nothing crazy. I know what you're about to say. But it, it happened today. Driving? No. Okay. The driving is, is cool. People complain, but it's way better than back home. Maryland drivers, second worst behind Virginia. Yeah. The liquor store's out here. So uh, it's Sunday. Uh, on the day of this recording is Sunday. You wanted to, you know what I'm saying, grab something to pull yeah. up to the show with. And we realized, yo, it's Sunday. The ABC store is closed. Yeah. I know that has to be like something that, like just growing up with, pissed you off because it pisses me off well growing up it was what it was but mm-hmm. once i got older and, and the homies started coming to the city yeah they didn't understand mm-hmm. they're like they're like what do you mean because north carolina drinks yeah north carolina drinks yeah. and it's like what like yeah. you you holding back on this on a state that drinks yeah that's crazy. It's Bible Belt, so it's yeah. like it's regulated differently. Yeah. It's regulated in terms of like we don't care about money, mm-hmm. and I'm not speaking for it. I'm just mm-hmm. like that's how they, that's how the the Bible Belters right. feel. Like they don't care about how much more money they can make. 
like other places may may feel, you know. So that shit is the it's really hard to maneuver around. You know what I'm saying? Like, so is that why? Like, is it strictly for church purposes? Like Sunday is God's day. That's why they don't drink or have. I don't know if it's open? that, but just people that think like that uh -huh. run this run this town, run mm -hmm. this state. So yeah. it's like the things that don't move them, mm -hmm. like money doesn't move them. It's mm -hmm. whatever their morale is. And mm -hmm. that's why you don't see graffiti all throughout the city. Like you might in a Philly or some shit like that. Like it, we were the last teams to get black jerseys out of everybody because what black jerseys represent, mm. you know, like the Bible belt don't go for that. You know what I'm saying? We lost all star because of what? Like, some transgender bathroom situation. Like, really? I don't want to speak out of turn, but the Bible Belt controls like that old money. They call it old money. Yeah. You know, I do business with a lot of people that they don't care about my business. Like, it's their way or the highway. And that's everything around this bitch. It's like, we don't give a fuck. It's going, the liquor stores are not going to ever open. Yeah, it's just... It just it's just weird out here. <laughs> That's crazy. I, I didn't know it was that deep. It's that deep, G. Yeah. It, wow. Old money runs all of this shit. Wow. Yeah. Old money runs all this shit. Damn. Yeah. I, okay. And the thing about old money is they don't care about none of the new fans. Right. None shit. of the new nah, stuff. Nah, they don't give a fuck. It, they so, not. Since you said, I want to get your opinion on this. You said out All Star Weekend left here. What's your take on CIAA leaving Charlotte? Oh, see. See, 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 I went to a CIAA school and I, I think that was the worst thing they could have ever done. Me too. Where is it at? In, in Baltimore now? It's, bro. It's, it's, in, it's Baltimore. in Baltimore. Yeah. Bro. Like, it would have been one thing if they put it in DC. Yeah. Cool. I can understand that because Bowie State is the closest school to DC. That's where I went, which is in the CIAA. Yeah. But Baltimore, there's nothing. That has to do with anything close to the CIAA that's in Baltimore. You went to Bowie? I did. Damn. Yeah. That's yep, dope. Yeah. Where you go? I went to Elizabeth City. Okay. Yeah, so Bowie used to smack the shit out of us. We you played football? I played basketball. Basketball? Yeah. Okay. I played football. Okay. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah, yeah, what yeah, years? Yeah. We ain't got to do it. We ain't got to do it. 16 and 17 <laughs> or 15 and 16 or 16 oh, okay, and 17. Okay, okay. One of those combos. I can't remember exactly yeah. which. Yeah, we we yeah we beat up on Elizabeth City. My senior year, we traveled to y'all and beat y'all. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah. So it's in Baltimore. Now, like like I said, DC cool. I just it's like bro, like outside of the arena, where the games happen in Baltimore, you got Fed Hill, you got the Harbor. But I mean, one wrong turn. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it just makes zero, zero sense to sense. me of all places to go zero to sense. Baltimore. That makes zero no sense. sense to me. It was beautiful here. Oh man. You ever experienced it here? Let me tell you something, Ghost. The year I moved out here was the year they moved it to Baltimore. Never. Can I can I can I re can I relive through your reminiscence of it, please? Bro. I want you to just think like, so you haven't really got to experience the epicenter. No, Either. I missed out on the episode, bro. I, I, bro, I know, bro. Let me tell you, G. So, my best experience, like it, 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 it heightened it. I didn't have respect for it in high school because I didn't know what it was. I'm just from Charlotte, like I'm not a tourist. And and for those who are but, who don't know, the epicenter is a. Landmark in the middle of yes, downtown it's the, Charlotte. It's, it's the, the biggest landmark in the middle of downtown Charlotte, yeah. uptown Charlotte. Yeah. So being from here, I wasn't moved. I go to college now. I'm a part of CIAA. Mm -hmm. So on one of our last, one of my last years, the alumni give us access to everything. Mm -hmm. They got they they got the penthouse suite, and on this year, it's going the craziest it's ever went. So just imagine downtown, right where the epicenter is, flooded with people. What year was this? I really don't want to date it myself because it was like 20, 2011. That's not crazy. 2011, 2010. That's not crazy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just, you know, nigga again, oh. It's, bro, it's, a, it's a mental <laughs> thing, bro. It's a mental thing. Facts. But it's people everywhere. Mm -hmm. Bitches everywhere. Mm -hmm. Money everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The clubs, 
even after school was over, I'm hustling, I'm in the city, I'm maneuvering through all the strip clubs, they flooded. Yeah. Money is flowing, everybody eating. And the niggas that's really running the city, the niggas that's really from the city, they get to thrive, they get to come alive, they get to bring that bag out and let, let motherfuckers know that we alive out here. Mm -hmm. Because as far as national notoriety, don't know, you know, Charlotte like a side chick. Mm. Up until a year or two ago, people used to come here and leave and be like, where was I a week ago? Mm. Oh, I was in North Carolina. Not mm. even Charlotte, just North Carolina. It's just like CIAA made it like, no, I love Charlotte. Charlotte. Now it's getting to that again. Like, oh, no, I love Charlotte. Charlotte lit right now. Yeah. You know, we lit around this it bitch really right is. now. It brought but me out here. CIAA was that for mm. the city. And it need to, it need to come back. Bring it back to the crib, God damn it! I second that notion. Yeah, but that shit need to come back. It's the only home for it, and that's yeah. no not the Baltimore. I love Baltimore. You feel I'm me? I'm like, from I'm from that way. No, fuck I it. Love DMV. Fuck it being out there. It has no business being out there. It Man. should be in Charlotte. Majority of CIAA schools are in Charlotte. Yeah, and then Charlotte is the middle ground for all the. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm sorry. Majority of CIAA schools are in North Carolina. Right, right, um, right. So it, it only makes sense. And then Charlotte is the middle ground, and you have so many things to do, so many things to get into right. in Charlotte in a safe space compared to Baltimore. Like I said, right. Baltimore, you got a few spots, but run one wrong turn. You know what I mean? You on the wrong street. But man, I went to a Townsend homecoming. I went to a Morgan homecoming. Yeah. Townsend and Morgan get lit because they right there. They right next to each other. Bro. Oh, yeah. Townsend, hey. Townsend homecoming changed my life. And if you fuck a Morgan <laughs> bitch, you better strap up. A Morgan, a Morgan bitch, that was the first time a bitch ever put me in the bag. I'm at the ATM just trying to get myself situated to yeah. go back on the yard. Yeah. She just thought I was that at the, yeah. at the and just ran right down mm -hmm. on me. And I'm like, what school I'm at? Yeah. I might need to transfer to this motherfucker because that don't yeah. happen around this bitch. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? She just put me right in the bag. It mm -hmm. felt great. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Townsend? Oh, my God. Yeah. Never seen nothing like Townsend to this day. Yeah, I went to Townsend for a semester. Yeah, I had a girl at the moment though, so I ain't, I wasn't really wilding out. Oh, you oh, 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 you was that in college? I wasn't fucking around like that in college. Um, like, I had a girl in college, but I I was telling myself I can't miss these experiences. Yeah, so my <laughs> I really lived my college day my college days my first two years when I was at junior college in New York. Okay. Because it was brand new as New York when New York was popping. I'm talking about Bobby Schmurder, yeah, M.A., yeah. A Boogie. It was live. They's like, and I'm going to school with people from Schmurder's hood. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like what school if you're my man? Monroe College. Okay. Okay. So it's in New Rochelle in the Bronx. It yeah. has two campuses, but it was popping. That shit was so lit. And in Maryland, we don't have Latino women. Yeah. We got uh, Hispanic women. So that was the first time I seen Dominican woman, Puerto Rican woman, Ethiopian just too. on display. Yeah, they in DC on display, right? So, bro, and that was the first time I messed with a Jamaican chick. Yeah, she turned me out Man. for the best possible. Like <laughs> she really turned me out. So I was living my first two years when I was in New York. Now, fast forward, I get recruited to Towson, which I spent my first semester at after I got recruited. But I was only there for one semester. Then I went to Bowie State. Bowie State to me personally felt like 13th grade because yeah. there was so yeah. many people there I went to high school with or went to the same county that I yeah. went to high school with. So it wasn't the same compared to New York. So when I was at Bowie State and I had a girl at the time and I was just locked in on football, I wasn't even staying on campus. So I was just like really just just locked in on what I had to do at Bowie State. It was yeah. a few times like homecoming and stuff like I... We kind of wild out, but other than that, I was chilling. I just remember this big ass apartment complex at Bowie State where everybody lived at, and I I came out there one time. I don't I can't remember if it was homecoming or not, but mm -hmm. it was a party in like four or five different apartments, yeah, like in the same complex. It and was we just on, walking through this bitch, going to different on campus, pretty much. Okay, you, yeah, I forgot the name of them joints, but yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Bowie has some shit too. Yeah. Shout out Bowie, man! Mm -hmm. Like I, I used to love visiting Bowie too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's talk about content. I didn't even realize you've been doing content for a minute, ten yeah. plus years at least. According at least on YouTube, over ten years you've been doing content. When you say content, what do you mean? I'm talking about everything, from like music, music, oh, facts to yeah. podcasts to just yeah. videos. Yeah, facts. Now you are an artist. The music is there. We're going to talk about it, but let's talk about podcasts. Big Ghost Podcast. Yeah, I'm doing research on your YouTube, and four years ago, 
uh, right before podcast really took off, you had Big Ghost podcast. Yeah, facts. Let's talk about that. Like, what was that exactly? How did you find that though? How I do. You, I do. My, I do my how research. How did you even do that? I do my research. Nah, uh, when the world shut down, I felt kind of limited, but I also felt like, um, how can I say it? I didn't. It, it. I felt okay to just be myself. Mm. So I went to Sweetwater. I got. I got a podcasting bundle, and I started fucking around in the crib. So I record my very first video. I recorded on my phone, and uh, I just chopped it up. That was my first time even experiencing with editing, and the reaction I got in the comments on the ground, it was like, uh, "Oh shit, you know I could fuck around with this." Because you know I got theatrics, you know I just you know I got I got I got a character, I got an entertainment factor. So I just took it and ran with it because nothing was going on in the pandemic. Right. And I was traveling in the pandemic back and forth to California every week, and I would take it with me, and I would set it up in my in my hotel. Yeah. And I would just keep myself busy because music was slow, yeah. and uh, it I I realized that. This is something I could have even after music. You know what I'm saying? Like, if music doesn't take me where I feel like it should take me, this is something I could have. I don't ever want to give up my entertainment factor because it's who I am. It's how I was raised, you know? Yeah. So I just fuck around with it. Yeah. And the, the food reviews, that's just some shit I did. Like, I don't even know how the fuck I started doing some shit like that. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about the food reviews. Okay. So real quick, back to the podcast. I like how you said... You, it was it was locked down. The world was shut down. Yeah, and you just wanted an opportunity to be you, express yourself, yeah. and just document it. Like yeah. why not? And it worked. And that's um, that's a real important podcast in general. Is is like a form of therapy, right? I started it the exact same time as you, January twenty twenty. As far as this podcast, I had a football one a couple months before that, but. I was just documenting shit. I was yeah. just talking shit into a mic and just putting it out there. Um, so let me ask you. Okay, so that was January 2020. Or not January 2020. Four years ago, 2020, during the lockdown. And what even made you say, okay, I want to do a podcast? Because you could have just recorded stuff and put it on YouTube. What made you want to actually speak into a mic and record? Um, Sweetwater. Mm -hmm. I, I, I inquired. You know, I always... Start with an inquiry. Yeah, a good salesman can 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 sell me. Yeah, and that's yes. what happened. Okay, you know what I'm saying. And that's not easy to do. Mm. But he sold the fuck out of me, and I bought into it. And when I got all of the, uh, cause it's a full podcast bundle. I had the mic, the mic stand, the boom, the boom arm. I ha I had yeah. everything. Yeah, like so I was like, let me just fuck around with this. And you know, a lot of people don't know this, like. And when I was in college, I went to college just for basketball, but my minor was theater. Okay. So I have a whole nother side. Like, yeah. like I was raised on comedy, and then theater was my minor in college. I had theater classes and shit, so I have a whole character. I can see that. So this is just performing, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And then, and then I had been... Being a, I had been an artist for years already, so mm -hmm. it just was a natural transition. Yeah, It just took a lot because... When I left college, like like you said, Bowie was 13th grade for you. I, I think most people that go to HBCUs feel like it's just extended high school. Mm -hmm. When I left college, I just got right into the street. Yeah. So the hardest part in podcasting was I didn't know if people would still take me serious. Mm -hmm. But through the pandemic, I was able to just find peace with just being myself. Right. This is who I am. This is... I feel comfortable uh -huh. fucking around like this. Yeah. But I... You know, outside of all of that, I got to deal with a lot of shit. So I was worried about like, those niggas gonna think I'm pussy because I'm fucking around and I'm joking mm -hmm. on the camera and woo woo woo. Mm -hmm. You know, but I let it, I let it all go and yeah. just and just did it. Yeah, just jumped out there. And how was the reaction from the those beat. that you had some type of self doubt about? That that never makes it to me. Mm. The only thing that makes it to me is the positive. Okay. So I try not to get caught up in things because, you know, I'm a plan first guy. So when normally when you plan first, people think you got a shot at doing anything you touch. Mm -hmm. And that's mainly because the average person don't plan. Right. They think like, so I don't, I don't be trying to brag or boast, but it's like, bro, it's not that I'm good at everything. I just had 
a strategy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't get caught up in the people that was complimenting me. The ops and the haters or whoever the fuck I... That, that shit never make it to me. Mm-hmm. So it just gets stuck in my mind. Like, I wonder what niggas think. And then I'll be like, why the fuck am I thinking what niggas think? Right. Like, let me just be myself. Yeah. You well, know? I will be completely honest. Once it scales... Yeah. That shit will make its way to you. Oh yeah, that's like, a fact. Like that's, that's a fact. I, I've been realizing that lately, and I'm good now. When it first started happening, I'm like, "Who the fuck are these? They got me fucked up." Yeah. But then I'm just like, "Yo, is I cannot let this shit run, like even touch my frequency." That's a fact. And that- I, I be telling people that come on the show because I have a few clips that may go viral and may be controversial topics. Yeah. And they may be coming crazy for even myself or my guest. Yeah. And I be telling them, I always tell them, "Yo, do not get wrapped." up in that energy. If you want to respond to a comment on some funny shit, like some yeah. trolling shit, cool. But do not go back and forth with anybody mm-hmm. in the comments. Do I not do, do it. it. You will get sucked right into that energy. I never Don't do, do it. Don't do it. That happened to me with music mm. because music scaled. Yeah. Podcasting is just kind of some shit that I do. Right. Full reviews is just some shit that I do. But the music hate made it make it to me mm. from time to time. You know what I'm saying? How do you handle that? When I, when I see niggas, I ask them what it is. Mm. That's exactly how I handle it. Like like like, hey bro, let me holler at you, bro. Yeah, is we cool or not? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like, what about ones you don't know or don't see? People on the other side of the country. I don't handle it. One nigga, one nigga recently. This is very very recent, and you you had been following me since it happened. But one nigga was comfortable enough to like, uh, me and my man had a little bout on online. He's mm-hmm. another prominent. Artist mm-hmm. from the city. Yeah. Some random ass nigga decided to like diss me. So in a song or just in general? In a song. Oh wow. He just, he he did a play on my name. Like some type of ghost power flip. Like, like he dissed yeah. me. But I don't know him. So my response wasn't music. He wanted me to respond with music. So the way I handled it, I handled it online. But if it was a street nigga from the city, I wouldn't handle it online. I wouldn't say anything. Right. Even if he came to me on the internet. On the internet, mm-hmm. I run when I run into him, I handle that. But this this nigga from out of town, I responded online, and that's how I handled that situation. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah. bro, I was trying to talk some sense into him because yeah. he don't even have no clue. Right. You see what I'm saying? So you know, that's how I handle that, and and a few other situations like that. But if it's some if it's some city shit, we gotta keep it. We gotta yeah. keep it proper. Yeah. Do you? St- do you still do the Big Ghost podcast? Yeah, so, I do it more professionally now. Excuse me, I, I don't know if it's the goddamn. <laughs> you good? I told you that shit is sneaker, ain't it? it? Tastes like straight Kool Aid. So okay, you do it now. Is it straight audio or do you put it out video as no, well? I put out video. It's I put out video. Clips still on the YouTube. Yeah, but it was a gap, right? If I'm not mistaken. From yeah, I then. took a break from it because what we was talking about before we started. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I ran into a wall with uh, just. Balancing time and trying to figure out how important it is to me because I'm an artist. I tour. I, yeah. I move around a lot. Right. And my podcast was turning into interviews. It was, I, I was struggling with podcasting questions like, yo, what's your death row meal? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's some shit I'll see on, on the gram when mm-hmm. I'm scrolling the gram. I'm just getting niggas' life story. So yeah. it's hard for me to watch two hours of my own shit. Mm-hmm. And then clip it and take an hour to woo woo woo. Mm-hmm. So I end up racking up like 10, 12 episodes and didn't work on none of them post production. It can be very, it's very overwhelming. Bro, it was so overwhelming. I just stopped. Yeah. But I recently got back into it. You know what I mean? Like, right. so I told myself I'm going to upload every single episode that I got mm-hmm. and I'm going to clip them as I can. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's just going to be what it is. I- Yo, what up, Day Party? First and foremost, thanks for tuning in to the episode, but I have a quick question for you. Why haven't you started your podcast yet? That podcast that you've been talking about for days on top of days, you've been telling your friends and your family about, you already have the layout, you already have the vision, but you haven't started it yet. Why is that? Let me ask you, is the reason because you don't know necessarily where to start? If so, then look no further because I have officially launched my step-by-step online course on how to successfully start and run your own 
podcast. Listen, I have been through a lot, and I mean a lot of hardship and wasted money along this podcast journey. So my goal is to help you alleviate any of those bumps in the roads that I had went through and let you get straight to the point where you have your own well-tuned, high-quality podcast machine. You'll be provided with all the resources that you need from start to finish. Go ahead and check out the link in the bio for more information and details on the online course and get started today. Stop bluffing and stop procrastinating. Now let's get back to the episode. I got a question for you, but before I ask that, just to touch on it, how you pointed out, it's very time consuming, not even doing the podcast leading up to it. Yes. How you were talking about with the questions, it's no way I could just have somebody show up to my (coughs) pod, excuse me, to my podcast be ill prepared and we just have a conversation for an hour. Yes. I've tried it. I'm not going to lie because I was lazy or didn't take it serious or waited till the last second to try to come up with the questions and topics for a person. I tried it and it turned out horrible. Yeah, You can tell, I can tell on my episodes when I was prepared and when I wasn't. Yeah, The best episode I ever did, the best interview I ever did to this day was Lex Luger. Yeah, Not just because I grew up listening to Lex Luger all through middle school and high school, because I prepared my ass off like I was studying for SAT. Yeah. And my topics were on point and they yeah. just, the, the flow was immaculate. Yeah. And then I've had episodes where I didn't do any type of preparation. I'm like, oh, she pulling up, we just going to talk shit. Yeah. And it was horrible. So leading up to a podcast, yes, for those who want to get into it, it takes preparation, yeah. it takes time, and it takes... Your your undivided attention to really dive into who you about to interview. People Thanks. think they could just do it on this on the fly. Nah, it, it doesn't work like that. You think Joe Rogan just says, "Hey, yeah, come up and we'll just talk." Nah, he reads people's books. He studies people. He, he listens to their music. Bro. Yeah, he, he has a research team, yeah. right? And that's what you really on and you scared. We're talking about. Well, at least I'm talking about just me. Yeah, I ain't even talking about a team yet. So that's one thing leading up to it, and then <laughs> doing it. Okay, that's like the easiest part, if you would. I'll call it the 10% compared to the 90. So we got 45% before, let's say 45% after the production. The editing and production part of a podcast is a motherfucker. And how you said you had episodes stored... That there has to be a term for that because that happened to me and my man who does podcasts, and we were talking about this. Well, we'll have four episodes in the storage, right? And just thinking about having to edit all those episodes will trigger your anxiety. Yes. yes. And make you just <laughs> say, start it. freaking out before you even touch it. Yeah. And you'd be like, nah, I can't do it. Fuck it. There's no way I'm yeah, having time man. to do it. I just and can't and do you it. just abandon it. Yeah. Right. And then once you really like just sit down and dedicate about five hours to just really knocking it out, once you start to get going, you're like, okay, it's not as bad when you See, do it one at a time. I got kids, G, and it's yeah. like, I'm not one of those like that. I should leave the house, go to Starbucks, sit down for a few hours, do what I need to do. But it goes back to me saying, like, how bad do I want it? I don't mm. know how bad I want it. Yeah. All I know is when I started, I got a really good reaction right. and I kept it going. Right. I wanted to see how consistent I could be. Right. But when it's time to get down to the nitty gritty, yeah. I rap, yeah. I travel. Yeah. Like, how bad do I want this shit? And that's how I look up and they say, Damn, it's been two months. Mm. You know what I mean? My man had to point out to me that people took their time to take me seriously. Come sit down with me. Talk to me for two hours. And I don't put their content out for two months. And it's time-oriented. A whole Drake and Kendrick debate went by. So much anxiety. I During that time, I interviewed four niggas. And they mm. didn't put none of it out because I just couldn't do it. And y'all spoke on the yeah. Kendrick and Drake beef. Yeah. So I'm like, fuck, I got to watch the whole thing because now I really got to clip it yeah. around that. Yeah. Somebody who really cared got to go to YouTube, watch the whole thing. Mm-hmm. You feel me? But I can't use that. The best part of the interview was that topic, right. and I didn't even put it out in a timely manner. Mm. But you you said something like like earlier. I wanted to piggyback off of, bro. A nigga just I just interviewed a nigga. He just got out of prison, and uh, um, I thought I was doing him a, a service, bringing him on the pod. So I did my research, but I didn't do the correct research. I researched the day of. Mm. I was still researching on the way to my office. Mm. So that's cheating. That's cheating yeah. the whole grind. Yeah, it is. You feel me? So the podcast ended up being 36 minutes. Mm. And when we cut the camera, he say, bro, I feel like you tried me, bro. Mm. I'm like, what, you want to record more? 
It was the first time I ever really experienced it. He, yeah. he like, yeah, he like, yeah, bro. Like, 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 you got more questions? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I, I got another series of questions, but I ain't think you will even want to answer them. He, what is it? Yeah, bro. Like, like, damn, that was quick, bro. So yeah. we had to do a whole nother segment, and I, and I felt, and I, I felt where he was coming from. Yeah. I was ill prepared. It was a little disrespectful because it was 30 minutes. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And it was like, I. I knew for a week, uh, for a week he was coming, but I waited until the day of, and I was like, second. Yeah, "Yeah, so and you can tell you can't do anything like that. Anything, you, anything you're trying to build, you can't do it like that. You got to put the prop, the proper plan and time into it. It's no cheating the grind. Yeah, you bro. can't cheat the grind at all. You can't. Yeah, and I want to how you piggybacked off that. I want to piggyback off something you spoke about. You were saying, "Why am I doing it? What's the motivation? Yeah. to keep you going." I recently went through a realization, let's call it, where I had to figure out what's my why. Yeah. When I first started this, when I first started getting my buzz, I had my why. So I could sit down for hours on hours and edit and really take it serious and it 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 it, it manifested. Yeah. <clears throat> my why was to be the hottest podcast in Charlotte, had it on my board at my old spot, and I was working towards that because I saw that. Yeah. Once I got you know, some a good amount of buzz, and then I'm like, okay, I've been podcasting for how many years? Like, people know me. I need to start making some money. Yeah. My why changed. The real why changed, at least. I'm focused on I need to make some money. I'm not trying to waste my time no more. So then I stopped editing as much, because I'm like, yo, I'm wasting my time. I'm doing all this shit for free. It's people that's been podcasting for two years, and they on now. Yeah. Like, what am I doing, right? I abandoned my why and then my quality got abandoned. Like it clearly showed. Like my quality fell down, my engagement fell down. Like like I would have some stuff that would go viral, cool, but my heart wasn't in it. And like my everything, it, it wasn't complete how it yeah. was before. And I just had to really sit back recently and be like, yo, what is what is my why? Yeah. And I forgot it. I'm like, yo, why am I doing this? I legit forgot it. And then recently I took a week off to really just do some soul searching. I'm like, yo. Your original why, your plan, here was the plan. Be the hottest podcast in Charlotte. That leads to being the hottest podcast in the Carolinas. That leads to being the hottest podcast from Carolina to Atlanta. In the region. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. The, the, south, the southeastern region. Girl, that was the whole plan. And I completely forgot it. I got back on it recently, and I really feel good about doing the podcast now. I don't feel like I'm just doing it just to do it. I'm wasting time. I'm not getting paid. I, like, of course, who doesn't want to get paid? But yeah. that's not my focus no more. I know that shit's going to happen when it happens, how it happens. I want to cut you off. You good. You legit got the very best podcast in the city, bro. Appreciate that, bro. I, I wanted, I almost said the region. That's why I paused a little bit, but I, I had to remember I don't know about the region, but yeah. I know about this city. Right. It's 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 nothing. It's not even close. It's just not even close in quality and consistency. And is it is the word diction that I'm looking for? Like no freaky, but but just but just you know the the way you speak, yeah. you can you can go as far as you want to. You know what I'm saying? And this the city needs so much more. You know what I mean? Like. Like you got it, you fucking got it around this bitch. You Appreciate know? that, bro. I swear to God, <laughs> I swear to God. Appreciate I be watching that, your shit. I be looking forward to your shit. Yeah. I think when you was moving or, or, or whatever, not to put your shit out, yeah, you, you took a little break. I DM'd you, <laughs> yeah. did I? Yeah. What I said? You was like, yo, bro. I've been looking forward to the content. Oh Where's yeah, that? bro. I, was, I, I yeah. literally I when like, I get yo. on the gram, I be looking for the content because you have great content. Appreciate that, bro. You know what I'm saying? I watch shit. I watch all type of random shit online. Yeah. When I know something is going on in my own backyard, mm -hmm. that's just shit. Like, I'd rather not watch all the other shit. I like. I want to support what's going on around me, you mm -hmm. know? So when I found your page, I was like, I was so locked in. Everything. I'm commenting on everything. And I. you don't even know how much I don't even play like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't be in comment sessions. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't I don't be there, but mm -hmm. I be in yours. Yeah. Faithfully, I'm in there. Appreciate that. Like, like I'm in there just like whatever you're doing, I'm trying to say something funny. I'm trying to just I'm trying to just uh uh uh, uh contribute to yeah. to the to what you got going on. You Appreciate feel that, me? Bro. Like yeah. I fuck with what you got yeah. going on, G. Appreciate it, yeah. man. That that means a lot to me. You know what I mean? Just from one, someone that's from the city, that's from Charlotte, yeah. to someone that's driven. 
You know what I mean? And like I said, I've been doing research uh, on your content and your music for a minute, and I could tell you're driven. Like I said, I could tell you someone I'm interested in as far as stuff you have to talk about. So yeah. far, it's been everything I imagined plus more. Yeah. So I was right on that. So to hear that from you, man, that really means a lot. No, for uh, sure. Uh, seriously, that that does mean a lot. I appreciate that. Um, so let's let's continue to talk about you for a second. Okay. You know what I mean, enough about me. Uh. A little over a year ago, correct me if I'm wrong, you went by Southside Ghost. Yeah. And you did a rebrand, if you would, yeah. to Ghostman. And you introduced this rebrand with your record, Welcome Back, record and music video, Welcome Back. How the fuck did you- <laughs> Am I on you point put, so far? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How you put that all I'm together? I'm on point so far? Yeah, that's dope. Uh, um, so just talk about that- process in general, that rebrand process in general, and why you even did it? Well, Ghostman was my ad lib the whole time. Okay. And I felt like I was limiting myself with the Southside shit because uh, I get caught up in trying to uh, be a flagship artist for the area. Like, I know we got the baby, mm -hmm. but... but uh, What does flagship artist mean? Just, you know, I fly to fly, like, like, like when you think of Charlotte, mm -hmm. you, I want you to think of me. Like, okay. when I think of Atlanta, I think of Gucci Man, but not just Gucci Man. Yeah. I know the streets right. that he's from. Right. When I got to Atlanta as a young nigga, I wanted to go to Moreland. I wanted to go to Zone 6. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go to East Atlanta. Yeah. So I get caught up in that, and it's kind of a limitation. So the south, the whole South Side thing. So I said, you know, the whole time I was going by South Side Ghost, my alley was Ghost Man, Ghost Man. So people, everybody called me Ghost Man. Mm -hmm. So I said, fuck it, I'm gonna just change it. And then on top of that, I'm gonna say it, fuck it, we on day by day. Mm -hmm. I don't get the most support from my side of town. What is, mm -hmm. what, like, what's up? Like, like I just did a show two days ago. Pack that bitch out. Mm -hmm. I could count on. Not even just one hand. It was it was three people from my side of town there. All my supporters are from everywhere else. Yeah. So I say, like, what am I really doing? And you know what I'm saying? Like, like, like I'll be going out of my way to represent this nation for shit, and they don't, you know, like, like I don't know what they see, because ain't nobody say nothing to me. But it's like, why am I carrying this south side torch like that? Let me. I'm trying to appeal a little further, you know? Mm -hmm. So I just said, I'm going to go by Ghost Man. I'm going to just... And the Welcome Back record, I was going through so much in my personal life, I kind of took a hiatus from being seen. So I named the record Welcome Back because I hadn't dropped a video and I don't know how long. Mm -hmm. I haven't dropped a project and I don't know how long. So I changed the name, dropped the video, called that bitch welcome back, you know, and I kept it going from there. That's yeah. what's up. Quick question. Well, statement first. It seems like a lot of artists, I hear that from vast majority of artists where they say they own neighborhood or they own side of town yeah. doesn't support them as much as everywhere else. Yeah. Like I hear that a lot. Like Boosie comes to mind first and foremost when I when I hear Hypnotized that. Hypnotized by hatred. Yeah. yeah. W w say that again. That's a good quote. Hypnotized by hatred. Mm, what does yeah. that mean? Elaborate that a little bit. Oh, that's Boosie quote. Uh. So like in the community, you just hypnotize because of the way things operate. Like mm -hmm. like you hypnotize into hating the man across from you when you really should be supporting him. Yeah. And we so hungry around this bitch, we'll take from you when. We should be trying to eat with you, yeah. or we should be trying to help you, yeah. whatever. Whatever it is, we shouldn't be trying to take from one another. But that's the inner city, that's the community, you know, that's just how it go. That's like the intro to Bite when Big was talking on oh, Bitch I'm Trying to Eat. But when you were at the show and you didn't, and you only saw, what, three people from your side yeah. of town, you said? When stuff like that happens and it's right in front of your face, when you would think that that's where you would get the most support yeah. from, but it turns out to be... The complete opposite of that. Like, how does that make you feel? Man, it hurt. It, it hurt a lot. You know what I'm saying? It, Cause it's like I fly the flag for not just the city of Charlotte. Like, like I'm from a legendary area in Charlotte. I'm from Nations for a Road. Yeah. And it's not a lot of us representing. I'm the very I'm the biggest representer. Mm -hmm. Like, and I don't say that, like, I'm not. I try to stay away from anything that's self-proclaimed. Mm -hmm. Like we can go outside, the people will speak for me, they really right. will. 
but I am who I am. I, I represent this shit. I took this shit on four tours, screaming this shit at the top of my lungs, right? When I get to the crib and I throw my own show, own bread, own, I curated myself and I put it on Facebook where all my hood is. Everybody, not on, I don't got them on the gram, but I know they on my Facebook mm -hmm. every day for two weeks and nobody want to take the time to come. I feel some type of way yeah. because it's like, I'm valid. I really, really am. I'm not just saying it to you because you don't know me in this way. It's like, I'm really fucking valid. Mm -hmm. My family is really valid. Everything is valid. Everything checks out. Come to the show, bro. Yeah. Even the music, even fuck all the valid validity points that I'm trying to make. The music is that. Yeah. Come support it, bro. Yeah. Big homies, younger homies, my classmates, come pull up. They just were not. They got their own things going on. But, you know, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is because, like, like I said before, it doesn't make it to me. I just made a post the other day, got out of my character, like, I just want y'all to know I just sold out another show and whoop, whoop. I, I would love for somebody to say, nigga, you ain't even like that. So I could at least know that, oh, y'all don't think I'm like that. This whole this whole time I thought y'all knew I'm I'm really valid, but y'all don't think I'm valid. So at least I know that part. Mm. Nothing makes it to me. No type of hate. So maybe, you know, they say you ain't really doing much if motherfuckers ain't. If you ain't got no haters. Yeah. I think it's the opposite. How you said, oh, you ain't like that. I think it's, you are like that. You are successful. You are yeah. making a name for yourself. You are popping. And some people just can't see themselves to such a high standard. So when they see someone else living it, they hate it. Yeah. They say people tend to hate what they wish they are. Yeah. Or what they wish they were. So I think it's more so that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like people that just can't elevate themselves enough to see themselves where you at. So if they see, like, who, who this dude think he is? Oh, he yeah. think he's nice? And it's crazy you say that. Not to even cut you off, Thank but you. when I was in high school, I dealt with a lot. Like my grandmother, she taught me, uh, you know, when you when you work for things, don't be surprised at the results. So so if, so if like like if you work out, and then you you wake up one day and you 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 look in the mirror and you look good. Mm -hmm. Don't be like, damn, I look like like no, you worked out every day. Right. Like you look good now. Yeah. So I took that energy to school and people for some reason thought I thought I was better than them. I just I just carried myself a certain way. She always my grandmother would always preach to me, just act like you've been somewhere before. Even if you haven't, just yo, don't be moved easily. Don't mm -hmm. be you know, and I had this bravado. People thought I thought I was better than them. Uh -huh. I was just trying to be the best me. Yeah. So now that we all grown, mm -hmm. I be like, maybe they don't support me because when they think about little Mac that they my name Mac, Mac that they went to high school with, he always thought he was better than 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 whoever. Yeah. I never thought I was better than nobody. Yeah. I never had no money or nothing. Yeah. <laughs> like so I'd be like, bro, come to the show. Right. You feel it's me? All come, love. Yeah, it's love. Come to the fucking show, nigga. Man, aren't grandparents the best? <laughs> Grandma with those Man. quotes. It sound just like my grandfather. A quote that will always be embedded into my brain. He told me since I was a youngin and he really told me from football. But his quote that he would always tell me Never get excited. Yeah. High or low. Yeah. High or low. Stay even killed. That way you can be used yes. to when it's high or low yes. and you don't overreact or underreact. Yes. And he first told me that when I played football, I was in 10th grade on varsity. I was quarterback. I was better than the starting quarterback who was a senior. His dad was a coach. And I just could not understand that shit. He'd be like, yo, don't get excited. You know what I mean? Your time going to come. Don't get excited. Just do what you got to do. Or like whenever something big would happen in my life, you'd be like, that's what's up. Don't get excited. Yeah. You know what I mean? Don't get excited, dude. Like, and yeah, that's what's up, but don't get excited. And I carry that with everything I do now and how we were talking about earlier when a professional, uh, definition of a professional is when shit goes wrong, still making it look squeaky clean. Yes. I got that essentially from him because he's saying don't get excited no matter what. Okay, well, let me be prepared for this shit to happen that will go wrong when right. it does. I'm good. Well, if the plan, I'm, I'm like, like I said, if the plan fails, that's the only thing I can live with. Mm -hmm. I can't live with not having a plan. Right. Like, 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 
Like if I go into something with no plan and everything goes extremely wrong, mm -hmm. I'm gonna be mad at myself. Mm -hmm. Things can go right with no plan. I'm still gonna be disappointed in myself. And that's sometimes a disconnect with me and another person. Yeah. Because when I when I do have a when I do have a plan, I execute the plan and everything goes right, yeah. I'm still not excited. And people think I don't have gratitude or something. And it's like, do you know how fine the line is between good and great? It's it's like, you know, I, I caught Will Smith saying, like, you may think the distance from grade C to B is the same distance from B to A. And you don't even know you got to, in order to go from B to A, you got to cut friends out. You got to change your diet. You got to change the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you sleep, everything just to get an A. Mm -hmm. But some people don't aspire to be that level. Mm -hmm. So on my day to day, I, it's a lot of misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. People often think I don't appreciate things and I appreciate everything. I just thought it, I just think appreciation is a given. Right. It's like, of course I appreciate that we made it home alive. Like, like what the fuck are we talking about? You show <laughs> your appreciation through the work that you put in. Yes. Which is why when the results come, you're like, okay. Cause yes. you, you, you appreciated the work. You appreciated the yes. grind. I feel you. And then I think part of being a professional is, or someone that's highly driven, I should say, is never being satisfied. Yes. That's what it really comes from. Yes. Never being satisfied, always thinking it could be better. Yes. Why do you think like uh after like wins, you see like uh uh Tom Brady, Bill Belichick, Nick Saban after wins, they're like, Yeah, it was, look <laughs> yeah, it was cool, but you know, we could have did this better. I just watched Georgia whoop Clemson's yeah. ass 34 to 3. After the game. They're trying to give praise to Kirby. He was like, "We played shitty. Yeah. We got to do much better." Like, yeah. and that that's because he appreciates the grind to make his team the best possible. But their wives probably hate them for that, and it's like it's that level of misunderstanding. It's like, yo, you you don't you don't you don't you don't, you don't get it, and that's crazy. It's like, fuck. Well, <laughs> it, they, after a while, they have to understand because it's important to surround yourself with people that do understand that. People like, tolerate things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we we never know. I think yeah. it's about who you put yourself around that understands it as well. Because me and you can understand it. Yeah. And like I've been around people that try to like give me a lot of praise. I'm not good with compliments, but they will always like try to give. And I'm like, yo, what can I do better? Yeah. Like stop get like Man, you're you're bro. around me all the time. You see what I do, bro. I don't get like what can I do better? Bro. And they will be like, yo, stop trying to be humble. Like I'm like, yo, it has I just. I, <laughs> Like what? What do you want me to do? If I'm in a room and you don't have no no criticism mm -hmm. for how I can be better, mm -hmm. I probably need to change rooms. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Straight up. Like 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 I really, my anxiety gets high when you just when somebody acts like everything is okay all the fucking right, time. Right, that means something's wrong. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that means something wrong. Yeah. Um, let's talk about music. Let's talk about the good side of music, I should say. So, sure. little backstory: me, I'm from the DMV. I'm from Maryland, Lower okay. Maryland. The DMV in general, we we usually be on some player shit. You know what I mean? Like it's I see it's, where it's going. You know what I mean? Like yeah, we usually be on some player yeah, yeah. shit. So, music wise, I've always been attracted to that type of music that yeah. puts me in that player player shit type state of mind. Larry June, heavy. Like, I didn't know that. Oh what you, my what you just said, I didn't know in the D, in the DMV. It makes it makes a ton of sense now. Yeah, 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 yeah it does. And I, yeah, and um, so Larry June, like the past two, when I first got introduced to Larry June, I mean, like I listened to him and Alchemist because Alchemist usually produces a lot of his shit. Shout out the shout Apple, out. yeah, Uncle yeah. Al, the Apple thing where it shows you who you listen to the most. Yeah. It was all Larry June and Alchemist. That's all it was. Yeah. So then. I get introduced to another artist through Larry June, Primo Rice. Okay. And he's talking the exact same shit. Yeah. And then I come across a song by Primo Rice, Deep in My Bag. Okay. That has been my anthem for okay. the good past three months or so. Okay. Niggas hip. Yeah, yeah, it. straight up. Straight. And then I found out he from the crib. Yeah. I'm like, Wait, you me? never knew this? I, well, I, I did it because I got introduced to him late. So when I found out Deep about Deep in him, My Bag was an intro... Your introduction to bro? No, I'm saying once I really like start listening deep in my bag every day, I'm like, let me figure out more about the artist. I knew who he was, I'm like Primo Rice. He nice, cool. I was like, hold on, let me find out more about him. Yeah. Cause I'm very stubborn with my music. Yeah. So people probably told me, like Griselda took me a year after my man tried to tell me about them until I really started listening. I'm just very stubborn with my music. So people probably told me about Primo back at the crib. I just tune shit out when people tell me about music a lot of times. But I'm listening to him and I'm like, yo, deep in my back, I'm just like, hold on, let me do some research on him. 
like, yo, he from the crib. Yeah. So I'm listening to everything. And I come across a song by him called Good Game. Come on now. And I'm like, yo, this shit come not. Come on now. And there's somebody who's singing the hook, right? In the first verse. And I'm like, this dude look mad familiar. <laughs> Like, I, I, I'm like, I know I'm not geeking. This yeah. dude looked mad familiar, but the song was amazing on top of that. Yeah. So I'm like, all right. So then, you know, me and you get to chopping it up over time. And uh, I'm like, yo, let's let's do this episode. And then I see on your page, you post a good game clip. I'm like, hold up, bro. This full circle ass yeah. moment. Are you serious? All this time, this was ghost that I was, I, yeah. I knew it was someone that I've seen before. But I'm like, yo, that's ghost. Yeah. Good game. Yo, which you, yo, first off, that's that shit's so smooth. The Man, beat not. Appreciate it. You killed the hook. <laughs> you killed the hook. You know what I mean? And even yeah. the music video, I'm like, yo, why does this look like some Charlotte shit? You know what I mean? Cause the same, I thought it was the car wash that's on Wilkinson down the street. Oh, okay, like, okay. I'm like, yo, this looks like a Charlotte car wash. Yeah. Everything. Um, so yeah, now nah, I just first and foremost want to say what a full circle moment it was for me to really put two and two together with Good Game, a great record that I play all the time. Yeah. Primo Rice, an artist that I've been tuning in lately. You, someone as an artist and a person, a, a content creator in general that I've been tuning into. Yeah. It was such a beautiful full circle moment, bro. bro. You talking about you, like. From the time I started commenting on your page, even if I DM you anything I ever DM you, I never mentioned that I did music or anything like that, but I knew where you were from because I watched your page. Mm. And I knew I just knew the time. I knew the universe would handle all of that. Yeah. I started like, yo, I got a dope home girl. She should come on your podcast. Mm -hmm. Right? Then it's like, you know, you say, yo, anybody interested in doing X, Y, and Z? Yo, I'm interested. The panel. Yeah. Yeah. And you respond. Like, like <laughs> so. I always approach you humbly because I'm like, eventually he might put it together. You know what I'm saying? I, I just wanted, I, I was like, I respect what you do so much. I didn't want you to think I was a weird ass nigga because it's weird ass niggas on the internet. Mm -hmm. And then that's why I, I keep saying over and over, I normally don't be in comment sections. Yeah. You feel me? But you inviting me here is the full circle moment for me. Yeah. You feel me? Because it's like, I seen it, uh, I, bro. When I saw your podcast, I said I need to get on that motherfucker. But yeah. I'm not gonna be weird about it. Yeah, I'm gonna just, you know, I'm gonna be myself. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And the universe will handled the rest. I was and that's exactly say, that's what all it did. the universe, yeah. bro. Like, yeah. cause even when you responded to the panel, I didn't end up doing that. I forgot what happened. I was gonna bring you on, and I was like, all right, it's gonna happen. I don't know when. And a lot of people hit me up to come on here. And I, it's not even out of arrogance, but you know, sometimes I can't respond to everyone that yeah. requests to come on here, or I'd be like, eh, I just don't see it. Again, it takes a lot of time lot of to time. shoot, produce, and edit an episode. I'm and like, you gotta really want to talk to a motherfucker. Exactly, like, like exactly, like, man, trying to talk to a motherfucker you don't want to talk to. Exactly. So, please. and I, I was just, I just had to get away from that, but. I just say that to say, yeah, it's the universe on how yeah. this happened. Just everything, just within the past five minutes we've been talking about. Um, yeah, so now nah, that you that being is from dope. the DMV, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I, I've been like, he repped this shit heavy. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, he gotta know, bro. You know, Prem, my right hand man. Mm. That's really my that's really my man. How did y'all meet? So we had a we had a store in Houston, and uh the DJ, we had like a little flagship DJ. Mm -hmm. He was a fan of Preem from the jump. Okay. And he was like, yo, we need to book him. And everybody in the store was like, we don't, we, who? We mm -hmm. ain't booking him. So he like, fucking, I'm gonna book him. Mm -hmm. Bring him down. This is, I don't know if this is first year, second year of making music. He brought the nigga down to Houston. And um, when he was telling us about him, I went and looked his music up and I said, he got a sound that I like. He, mm -hmm. he like, I fuck with this sound. Yeah. But because I'm on some street shit, I was never gonna tell him mm. that I liked his music. Mm. He flew to Houston, got in that car or whatever, drove to our store. We had a vintage clothing store. Pulled up at the store. We all standing outside to greet, bro. Just on some regular shit. He hopped out the car and said, yo, you ghost man? Yo, I just was watching your video, Steve's, that shit hard. Completely disarming. Mm. Prompted me to say, 
bro, I think you hard. Yeah. Like, like I thought he was dope the whole time, but because of the world I live in, you don't you don't want to be that guy all the time. It's so unnecessary. Yeah, yeah that pride. You know, yeah, it's just pride, pride and ego and shit. Yeah. But him having no reason to even say that. He said yeah. that to me first. And yeah. that's what started our friendship. Wow. We did a show together. Like, like they booked him for a show. Uh, and I performed on the same show, of course, because yeah. it, was, it was my DJ. Yeah. And then we got in the studio. And after that, I traveled with him for probably years yeah. with no benefit. Yeah. It was just, I was just trying to learn something. Wow. As long as I had the money to do it, yeah. he would invite me like, yo, I got a show here. If you want to pull up, you can. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Even though we may have songs together, I wasn't trying to infiltrate mm -hmm. you know like like i was raised like like you want to have people around you can use but you don't want to misuse nobody right, yeah so i didn't want to i didn't want them to feel like i was infiltrating like i had an ulterior motive mm -hmm. so i will pull up wherever i could afford and just play whatever role they need like mm -hmm. like and eventually my number got called mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying it's best thing ever happened like having a friend like bro a colleague like bro first music checks i got was from bro when when we got shows and he the only one that got a set, if I don't have a set but I'm in town, he let me perform on his set. Wow. He don't have to do that. It's not it's not normal. Yeah. So just through and through, he been one of the most solid niggas in my corner through in his rap shit this whole time. You feel me? And it, and we like eight years in, like it, he just bro, he just been solid. Him, his whole team, they just been solid to a nigga. Damn, bro. And that's dope. He, if he wouldn't have said shit to me, I wouldn't have said shit to him, and mm. I, and I probably wouldn't fuck around be sitting here with you right now. Mm. I don't know who knows, but yeah, I would. wow, yeah, that's 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 a dope ass story, man. That's beautiful, man. Yeah, man. So how did Good Game come about? So Good Game, uh, uh, I apologize if I'm speaking out of turn, but I speak truthfully. Like that was my record, mm -hmm. so I recorded that, and it was actually a two part song, but all me. Okay. And I sent it to him wanting to know what he thought about it. Mm -hmm. I had Good Game second. I had a whole nother song. It was an interlude. It was like okay. uh, two songs mashed together called the inner, and it was, I was gonna name it something a good game interlude. Yeah. I sent it to him. He said, yo, this shit's so dope, it need to be first. Mm -hmm. It need to be its own song. So then I started thinking about my audience. I started looking at the numbers and the analytics, and I, I hit bro up and I said, yo, this would be more receptive if you put it out mm. because my audience still want street shit for me. I'm trying to merge. Yeah. You put it out. Yeah. And he was like, he, he put a verse on it, put it out. And we got like four records together and that's probably the biggest one. Like, like that, that record goes crazy everywhere it we does. go. Yeah. That shit is just smooth. It's going to be around for a long time. It's a vibe, bro. Yeah. Even the music video, you had them in the hood, right? Yeah. Facts. Yeah. But, but worse than that, like, like if you, if you clip this part, I'm not going to collaborate on it, but you want to know how to, you want to know how to, the shit came about. Yeah. I was going through a nasty separation from the, from the family. Mm -hmm. And on that day, on that fucking day, Preem was flying in to shoot the video. Mm -hmm. I I moved to Miami, mm -hmm. but I flew back to Charlotte. I was trying to see my family and shit, see my kids and shit. When I go pick my kids up, she got a uh, her car is full of my items that I left in the house. Mm -hmm. Very expensive items, very personal items. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, you just been riding around with my shit. What the fuck are you doing? She can't mm -hmm. get access to my storage. So. She like, yeah, I just trying to get in the story. Woo -woo. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go pick Prima up from the airport and then I'll meet you at the storage unit. Mm -hmm. I pull up to the storage unit. She all my shit is on the curb. Wow. All my shit on the curb. Sorry to throw you under the bus. Damn. But it's the truth. Yeah. All my shit under on the curb, right? So I'm like, I'm like. Embarrassed because <laughs> I got pre with me, right. but now I want to make this song. I want to make this song like I never let a wee big homie down. Mm. <laughs> like I start getting just deep in the bag, like, and that's really how that shit came about. Wow, it was just inspo. I took it. I use it as inspo. Wow, because I'm picking up, you know, yeah. twenty boxes of shoes, Palm yeah. Angel coats, all type of shit yeah. just on the curb. I'm just picking it up, putting it. In the storage and shit. 
So I went in the studio, made that fucking song, bro. Like, and you literally didn't, not only did you not let it hold you down, but you used it yeah, as yeah, fuel just, for the actual song. That's just, yeah. Yeah, bro. Like, and that's yeah, yeah. That song is doing so, great. So you made the song that same day, or shot the video that same day? Nah. So so I'm so I'm speaking in two different. I, I jump I jumbled it on accident. So okay. bro was in town, but we recorded we recorded his verse. Okay. Then he was in town again, and we shot the video. Got you. Yeah. So how was the video? How did that go? The video was dope. Uh, it started off with one car. My man, my man, uh, shout out my man Fly King. Mm-hmm. Well, I was running late because I had got really fucking drunk. Cause I was dealing with shit. Mm-hmm. I got really drunk. I pulled up like an hour late. Me and Prem, we put up an hour late. And he when we got there, he was like, yo, you want me to call? Like uh my man got a car club. You want me to call? Woo-woo. So Prem is kind of, he don't want to be around too many fans, but I'm like, Yo, this is the city. Yeah. Let me just let the internet know that we shooting a video. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I, I ain't gonna put the address out. I select who got the address, but right. they gonna tell whoever they tell. Mm-hmm. It it ended up being like sixty to hundred people. Yeah, yeah it was deep. Yeah, it was deep, and it was hard to tell on the video shoot because of the way they shot it. But it was one. It started off with one car and everybody else personal cars. Like some of the homies had nice cars out there. But my man made one phone call and 10 Cadillacs pulled up. Mm. So that turned it into a situation. Mm. And I ain't really seen bro vibe in a video like like that ever. You know, he was just at home like my mom Dukes out there. Yeah. We got the Mexican lady out there. They let us use the food truck. Yeah, like, the food truck was there in Yeah, like I'm really, shit. I'm really valid in my hood. So yeah. we just having a blast yeah. and it's peaceful. Yeah. And... A lot of people can't do that. Right. Can I pop it right now? Yeah. You feel me? Like yeah. a lot of you niggas don't try that. You yeah. feel me? Big ghost in this motherfucker, yeah. nigga. Yeah. yeah. Straight up. <laughs> hey, that's what's up, man. When it's a vibe, it's different. Yeah. When it's not forced, when it's just a vibe, it's different. And homie felt that. And how you said uh your moms was in the video, your moms yeah. be Video concerts, yeah, performances, yeah. front and center. Oh, she not gonna miss nothing fun. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? She gonna support me. Like my mom was number one, always let me know, like. I, you know, it would have been nice to have more sh- sh- strategy, but my mom was always there to say, hey, mom, I want to be an astronaut. You can do it, baby. Go be the best fucking astronaut. She yeah. never I, she never met anything that I couldn't do. Mm-hmm. And that was enough for me as a child. But as an adult, I wish she would be like, well, are you sure? You know, well, let's do some exes and O's. Mm-hmm. But anything I do, my mom is there to support. I could fucking go be a soccer player tomorrow. She'd be right there at the game yeah. in the fucking sun just thinking I'm about to be the best in the world. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So she, shout out Mom Dukes for that. Like she always, don't let it be no show. She going to come up. I'm going to pull her on stage. She going to yeah. do a thug thing. Yeah, she be on stage. Yeah, oh, I'm like, oh, okay. you seen that shit? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She be front and center. That shit yeah. was electric right there. That's what's up, that man. That shit was electric in the city right yeah, there. Yeah, shout out to Mom Dukes. Yeah, facts. Shout out my mom, man. So... Uh, what is it? Uh, your food review. Yeah. What's it called? Big Ghost Food Reviews. Yeah, it ain't got no name. I just, I just do food reviews. Like, it, do it got a name? Yeah. yeah. Well, your your broadcast channel on IG is called Big Ghost Food Reviews. Oh yeah. Like that was, the, that's the, just the, me trying the community. Some shit. Yeah. The community. Uh, how's that going? You still active with it? That's something I should probably do the most because that's what I get like like the most recognition from. Mm. I be at shows and motherfuckers be, I can't even eat a chicken wing outside. Motherfuckers yeah. gonna be like, what you ready, Ghost Man? Yeah. One out of 10, Ghost Man. And, and, it, and it go back to me, like I be getting caught up in who I think I am. Like, mm. yo, is motherfuckers gonna take me serious out here? Mm. Or am I, cause sometimes I still be into it with niggas and yeah. they be like, bro, I ain't worrying about that lame ass food reviewing ass nigga. That's what I be thinking mm. is being said. And it's not, it's not worth it. Like. Need to let those thoughts go. So I'm able to talk about this now because I think I, I healed from it. But like how I said, like a, a, when I would be like, yo, this person just started a podcast and they popping now. Food reviews. When I first moved to Charlotte, before I got back on my podcast, I did food reviews. Did you? Yes. And I stopped. This was before anyone do it. The only reason I did it is because I love Fuck That's Delicious yeah. with Action Bronson. Yeah. This was before food reviews on TikTok and shit was really popping. I did it when I first moved out here in 2021. And I put like, I'm going to show you them on my phone. You're going to geek when you see it. But I stopped. 
similar to how you said, man, ain't nobody worried about. I stopped because nobody was tuning in. Yeah. And, like, and now to think about it, why would they? I just moved out here. Ain't nobody know me. Yeah. But nobody was tuning in. I'm like, damn, I'm wasting my time with this shit. I look up three years later, Keith Lee, Mr. Chime Time. It's dudes that really took the food review shit. Literally what I did. Yeah. And popping. I had food review beef. Mm. I had fucking food review beef. <laughs> and pop, but I just say that to say, for one, sticking to your why. Yeah. And doing it because... Do it for the love. Shout yeah. out to Fab. I was just listening to For the Love off of uh, Soul Tape. Doing it for the love, it, it, it's different, bro, because that's what's going to take you there. But See, I don't know. Like Once the motherfucker got in my comments on some hate and shit, mm. I was like, do I even love this? Because mm. in between music, making music, shooting videos, shows, and touring, mm -hmm. if none of that is going on, I'll do anything to stay relevant. Not anything, but podcasting and... Food reviews is my go-to. Yeah. But once hate get in the mix, I be like, do I really even give a fuck? It's a popular food review dude. His name like Corey. He got this monotone voice. You, I'm sure you've seen this shit. He be like, yo. I might as Oh, yeah. Out here in Charlotte? Yeah, in Charlotte. Yeah, he be yeah. like, yo. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I did a stitch. You know how you do a stitch video uh -huh. on, on TikTok? Yeah, yeah. I did a stitch video. Like he 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 did a review. I mm -hmm. went to the place. Yeah. I did a stitch video, but I ain't tag him. Uh -huh. And he jumped in the comment with a paragraph, uh -huh. like, yo, at least you could tag me if you just gonna use my content and bash. Cause I I I reviewed the food and it said it was trash. Uh huh. But I'm like, bitch ass nigga, you ain't make the food. Yeah. Like you, this ain't your restaurant. Mm -hmm. I'm not critiquing your review. I'm mm -hmm. critiquing the food. Yeah, and it blew the shit out of me because uh, I really smacked it. You feel you, me? You I got was like, <laughs> you got submerged in the energy. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. You got submerged in the energy because that wasn't good energy he put in your comments. Yeah. Obviously, he was upset. So that's upset he, energy that he put out there, and you got submerged I in was it. Like, yeah. I was like, what's up with this nigga? He acting like it's his food. Mm. So then I made a video and I put like his his name, like, mm -hmm. like, but a million times, and I say, tag, nigga, tag, mm -hmm. nigga, tag, nigga. You wanna be tag, tag, yeah. nigga. Yeah. I just And after you put true. that video all out, how did you feel? <laughs> like an idiot, like I was being cornball. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like what am I doing here? Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like, we that that's that's I'm, a big thing. Yeah, we I'm think, better than that. Yeah, we think in the moment, oh, I'm this is get back. Yeah. And then after we sit back and be like, yo, I'm a dickhead, bro. Yeah. What did I just do that for? I really got submerged in that bad energy yes. and made myself look more like a fool. Yes, bro. I made myself look like an idiot. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and it took me a while to realize it. It's like because I did it for people to see. It's mm -hmm. like people saw me acting like that. Yeah. Some people, that's their first impression of me. Yeah. And they, so they're never going to fuck with me. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. You get what I'm saying? It's yeah, like, this I, shit was unnecessary. It, like, unnecessary. <laughs> I recently did something like that. Uh, I responded to a comment like now that I'm like, yo, why did I say that? Um, it, ha it has something to do with me and my guest giving our opinions on marriage, yeah, the financial part of marriage, the mm. business part of marriage, and women were hot. Mm. Boy, that had women hot. Like, I legit felt like Kevin Samuels for a minute off of that. And the comments were coming in talking crazy, but I responded to one pretty much. And also, this woman follows me. Like, she supports my shit. She supports my content. And I gave her a nasty... I, res I responded to her comment in a nasty way. It wasn't too crazy, but looking back at it, it was nasty. She, I don't. I don't even think she follows me anymore. I, I would, never seen you comment. No, nothing. I never do. Yeah. But it was just so much, and I'm like, I, I got submerged in it straight yeah. up. I did, and she didn't even mean it the way she said it when I turned when I looked back at it in hindsight. But I responded to it nasty, and for and like, for like days, like that shit was weighing on my mind. Yeah. Like I didn't even post anything for days after that because I'm like, yo, that shit really took control of me and yeah. like made me. Become someone that I'm not, I'm not even that person, bro. Yeah. Like, and you know, she probably was like, yo, what's up with this dude? Like, that was like that was unnecessary as shit. You know what I mean? So it, it's real important. And it's easier said than done because social media, I mean, it's you know, it really controls people's lives out here. But yeah, you really can't let it, you know, get the best of you and let it submerge submerge you in that uh I, I, that type I, of environment. I normally don't like like TikTok. I got a, a nice following on. I don't mm -hmm. respond to shit on TikTok because the the TikTok al algorithm push hates 
push pushes hate to the front. Yeah. What was in this shit right here? I told you, bro. This shit got me acting like I can't articulate myself. I told you, bro. That the shit TikTok like algorithm pushes the hate to the front. It does. You know what I mean? So once I peep that, I'm like, I'm not even going to read them. I'm not even going to. I don't touch my TikTok comments. Yeah. I literally like IG out at least like IG, and I'll respond to some because yeah. IG is more community based. Yeah. TikTok is going to be random ass people. So they're going to say whatever they want. They're going to spill all their insecurities in that yeah. comment section. The comment section is, is nasty. It's nasty. In TikTok. It's nasty. Yeah. To get back to food reviews real quick. So recently, Mr. Chom Time was in Charlotte. Yeah, I hate that guy. Keep going. Keith Lee was recently in the D, uh, in DC in the DMV area. Yeah. Um. Just real quick, the impact of food reviewers today yeah. is insane. Yeah. How it can take a company and really like it's literally the best form of marketing nowadays, right. besides word of mouth, of course. But it's crazy. Like my man's back home, Mr. Chom Time was out here and went to that egg roll cold uh food truck. My man sent me, he was like, yo, he sends me Mr. Chime Time Review. He's like, yo, you got to try this out. I'm like, bro, Mr. Chime Time reviewed it and gave it a good review. It's going to be months before I can get it, before I can get there. I won't be able to try it for months. And show sure enough, the line, like, you know what I'm saying? It's put all, it's all on Instagram and stuff. The line was crazy. Like, they had to shut down a few times. See, I didn't, I, didn't, I don't know why my TikTok doesn't bring that part of his content to me. Cause all I saw was like he was going to the most random places in the city, mm -hmm. and it just left me saying, "Why are you here?" It's more trash spots than it is good spots. Yes, the good spots that he went to, the egg roll spot, and then one. I'm I'm glad for her that he went here, but I'm also kind of upset because this was like a low key spot, Maria's Mexican on South Boulevard. Oh, Maria's is the shit. Yo, he went to Maria's. I'm like, no, bro. Did he, he liked it. Yes, okay. gave it an amazing Maria review. Taco? Yes, yeah. with the burritos, with the green roof. The I'm like, no, bro. So Man, me, I... me and the shorty I was talking to, we went there for lunch one, no, for dinner. I'm like, yo, let's go to Maria's. I'm like, honestly, the dude just did a review, so it's probably going to be crazy, but fuck it, let's try. I already knew. Yeah. Bro, we pulled up. I've never seen Maria's this packed. It was a line coming out. I've really? never seen it that packed, bro. Yes. Maria's go crazy. Bro, insane. I, grew up in I love yeah, Maria's, bro. Refire. Refried beans. I so, thought you was about to say Mariah's. Uh-uh, Maria's. Yeah. And the whole time is Maria. So it's an old lady, an older lady, I should say, that's in the back. I think that's Maria. Do you know? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So when that. I went, it was an older lady in the back that was cooking, right? Yeah. And she had on like her older lady like gown, like older, older Mexican lady, real sweet. And she came out while everyone was eating. You could tell she was back there cooking. She came out. And like just walking around the restaurant, making sure everyone is good and like Probably their food. Her. I'm like, I think that's Maria. Yeah. That's some OG shit yeah, right facts. there, bro. Like for real. Yeah. So yeah, Maria's Maria's is that smoke. Shout out Maria's. Maria's good as fuck. Yeah. Um, yeah. why don't you like the Mr. Chime Time dude? Uh because he just you really want me to expound on that? I do. He's just a cornball, bro. I fucking hate his haircut. I hate <laughs> I hate the restaurants he goes to. I hate the way he talks. He he. Sometimes he has this satire in the videos where he does like some freak man shit. You know, he'll say some sassy. Like I don't want to say the word because you know some I'm freaky a, shit towards the food. Yeah, he'll just do some. You know, mm -hmm. like like it's typically white humor. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, and if you know if that's too far, I apologize. I'm not trying to offend. Any, uh, white, any humor, white humor is a real thing. I love yeah. the Office. That's as white humor as you can get. Yeah, but great show. He'll just do some shit like, oh, I just wanted to drip in my mouth. Like he'll say some okay, crazy I see, I see shit. What, I see and it's like, bro, that. get your goofball ass out of here. And he came to the city and was trying all the worst restaurants. And I was trying to figure out why are you here so long? Are you mm -hmm. from here? Are you from mm -hmm. Winston? Are you from He's from North Carolina? Yeah, I, I could tell he's from North Carolina. But when he came here, he was here for like damn near two, he got two weeks of content. Yeah. And I'm like, bro, be in spots for a minute. Leave, bro. <laughs> Just leave. Okay, so you were one of the people in the comments telling him to leave while oh, I was Oh, absolutely. Okay. I got videos. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I got videos because I went viral off Keith Lee. When Keith mm. Lee came here to do Bojangles, he uh, said the, the honey mustard tastes like horseradish, and he wasn't impressed by Bojangles. So I made a video showing him. I, I made a Stitch video. It might be at like $2 million now. Excuse me. Um... Just showing them the correct way to do Bojangles. And mm -hmm. that shit clicked. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. So I try to do the same thing with 
Mr. Chan time, like like just not even really the same thing, cause mm -hmm. I didn't show him how to do the restaurants the right way. I just made a video, like, bro, just, just why are you here? Well, let's do this then. All right, Mr. Chime Time was in Charlotte. You, along with a lot of people, did not agree with majority of the spots that he went to. So let's do this. You're a food reviewer yourself. Where she went? Mm -mm. Oh. Something like that. What are the top five oh, food spots in Charlotte, North Carolina? What you, what you looking for? You looking for mom and pop? You looking for anything? five star? Anything. Top, like... If someone was like, I'm going to Charlotte, I need five spots. I don't care what establishment, what type of food, the five best food spots in Charlotte. So this is becoming a food truck city. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give two food trucks a go right now. Okay. First, I'm going to say Rolos. You ever had Rolos? I haven't. I'm going to add it to the list. So I got a list. I got a list. Yeah. If you ever go to Atlanta, you go to JJ's, you get the, the fish and chicken with the crack sauce crack on sauce, it. Crack sauce, yeah. They got that here now. Okay. We Rolo got we, we got a spot back home called Hip Hop that has that. Okay. Rolos. Rolos is good. It's a truck? Yeah, it's a truck. All Another right. truck. I don't fuck with this girl at all, She got the, but she got the best tacos in the city. Her name is Mariah. Mariah's Taco Truck or whatever. You know, we the same age. Went she went to a different high school down right down the street from mine. Don't got the best relationship with her, but her food is fucking bomb, better than Maria's. That's a that's a tall that, statement. Yes. Okay. I that that I said that because I want you to go. Like, yeah, like, I got I, you yeah. now because Maria's that's that's my spot. Fig Tree is a low key fine dining. Establishment here. It's not the. It's not the. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not the hype. You know what I mean. So it's not STK, but it's even better. You can go get some elk. You can go get some fig tree. Is amazing for a date night, a celebration, something intimate. Right across from fig tree is Cajun Queen. You been to Cajun Queen? Mm -mm. I got some work to do. Yeah, Cajun Queen Cajun is a Queen. is an entry level date night. Okay. For phenomenal food, okay. but not over overspending. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Mom and pop. What is that? That's four. That's four. Okay. So I, the last one I'm gonna do is just straight mom and pop. I'm gonna go Nana Nana Soul Food. I think where's that at? That's on the south. So right by the airport on York Mount. No, I, I, it sounds familiar, but I don't think I. Yeah. If one of these spots are open, I'm actually going after this. Okay, yeah. Nana's Soul Food. Nana's might. Nana's is closed. You know, this Charlotte, but uh, everything closed early. Already, Cajun man. Queen might be closing at eleven. Um, Nana's Soul Food. Or I might, I might treat myself tomorrow. I, I don't need to eat this late. I'm gonna yeah. treat myself tomorrow though. Cajun Queen is really fucking good. Okay. Really good when you just met something you want to take her a year yeah. trying to spend four or five hundred dollars. Right. We could eat. We could both eat and drink for a hundred dollars and eat really fucking good at Cajun yeah. Queen. You know what I'm saying? Nana's. I threw Nana's in there. A lot of people don't fuck with Nana's, but that's my go-to soul food because this is not a soul food city. I lived in Houston for two years. I lived in Miami. I lived in L.A. Like I need good soul food. Like mm -hmm. this is it. Just don't do it for me here. Mm -hmm. Like, which is crazy because I was ignorant to that. Yeah, along with a lot of people, like the dude, Mister Chom Time. Like he, when you think of Charlotte, when you hear Charlotte, like a lot of people say it's good soul food out here because it's the South. But you're right. It's a few spots it's, that are really good. Yeah. But majority of spots soul food out here ain't here. Yeah. So what is Charlotte known for? Food wise, because in, in Maryland, DC, and the DMV, we got seafood on lock. We known for our barbecue, but the thing is, like, like that's a that's 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 a white man sport mm -hmm. out here. Plus, y'all's is the vinegar based barbecue, right? Yeah, it's not it's not yeah, the barbecue shit. I like. I like Texas barbecue, but mm -hmm. we known for our barbecue. But but our people not gonna recommend you to that, right? You know what I'm saying? But if if we talking like like just the facts, like yeah, Carolina barbecue is a thing, but I don't indulge in none of that. I wish we had a soul food staple, some type of like I go to Cle Cleveland, they got the corned beef. You know, when I'm in D.C., they got the mumbo sauce, they got mm -hmm. the carryouts. Mm -hmm. Even the Ann Pizza situation is like, oh, you a, fuck a, with Ann Pizza? Yeah, 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 I'm all through. Yeah, Ann yeah, Pizza cool. You I know done been that? all yeah, through yeah, your town. Yeah, like, yeah, I done yeah. ate every who's and eyes. Okay, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I done had every fucking thing. I even done went all the way up to Bethesda before. 
before uh it's it was a, one of the first hot and juicies was in Bethesda. Mm -hmm. And uh I went out there and before it was just as regular and normal as it is now, the first one I ever went to, like a, a seafood boil spot, mm -hmm. was in Bethesda. Mm -hmm. Annapolis, like, you know, oh, yeah. I, I've the blue, been blue in crabs, every, crab cakes. Yes. I've been yeah. in every crevice of the DMV. That's what's up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we got oh wait, so did you Okay, so what you ain't answered. What is Charlotte known for food wise? It gotta be Carolina barbecue. Okay. We don't really have like no staple fish sandwich or, or no chicken, yeah. like no Nashville yeah. hot. We don't have that. Yeah. We're not right. there yet. So yeah. it would be nice though. I'm trying to think, man. We don't have it. Mm. One thing y'all need to get that y'all definitely don't have Chinese food. You know, back home, chi Chinese food carry out, whatever you want to call it, back home that we got. I have yet to have good Chinese food in Charlotte. Oh, I could direct you to that. Please do. Make I don't my got notes. the name, but I, I don't want to make a call while we on the podcast. Yeah, you can afterwards, but you know a spot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I All can't right, remember cool. the name, but the best spot is not too far from here. All right, bet. Yeah. Okay, bet, bet, bet. Yeah, yeah. Because nice. I, I I went to a spot. I went to a Chinese spot on the plaza because I yeah. used to live out that way off of Siegel and the Orange Building. You used to live out Siegel? Uh-huh. North Charlotte? It's like, is See, it North? That's North Charlotte. Yeah. Like, like you know, North Charlotte and North Side is okay. two different things. Like, okay. They call yeah. it North Charlotte. Yeah, I, I lived off Siegel, man. I miss it over there. It was very really? community type. Yeah, like you can, that's, you can tell that's like a historic black part of that's, Charlotte. Yeah, that's the one of the most historic. That's they, they call it First War. Yeah. Yeah. You live yeah. on Siegel, you really in the, you know, long live boss of the city. He just, you know, my man just passed mm -hmm. like right, right over there, mm -hmm. right around the corner from Siegel. You know. Yeah. So yeah, it it was dope over there, yeah. bro. Like, it, and I I like being around my people. I love being around black people. Like, yeah. where am I now? Is cool, but it's other white people, and I don't mind. But I just it's a different vibe when you around your own people. Yeah. You so I mean? let me ask you this: You said Laurel, uh -huh. cause I I when you first said it, I was I was thinking Largo. Mm -hmm. Where's Laurel in terms of uh like Oxen Hill? So Laurel to make it the easiest. Bowie. Laurel, whenever you. Drive through Maryland, whether you're on 95 or 295, you pass Laurel and you pass a sign that says Laurel. Laurel is directly in between Baltimore and DC. So it's like 20 minutes from both cities. Okay. Directly in the middle. So I definitely been through there. And it's and it's unique because it's one city that's split into three counties. Yeah. So you got Anne Arundel County, Howard County, and PG County. All three counties meet. At Laurel, good old PG man. And Laurel is it's diverse. Yeah. It's hella, it's hella spots, food spots, stores. Yeah. Like it's a lot to get into. And then you're you're close to everything. Yeah. You're close to everything in Laurel. Like you can get wet between Baltimore, DC, PG, Mo County, wherever you need to go. Laurel is directly in the middle. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it was just I asked because it was this carry out that I went to. Uh, I just know it's like Oxen Hill or some shit like that, man. Okay. I know it's in. Is that is Oxen Hill in PG County? Yeah, that's PG. So I knew it was in PG County, but mm -hmm. it's like a carry out and it's famous. It's a car wash, like diagonal mm -hmm. across the street. The best fucking breakfast I had in a long fucking time. Yeah. Can't remember the name to save my life. I just know how to get there. Okay. Maybe I'm, I'm yeah. if I heard it, I might know. Who knows? Yeah. 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 I got some good food, man. Yeah, yeah, we alright. We alright. <laughs> I gotta see what Keith what spots Keith Lee. He went to one spot and they put a picture up. I'm like, yo, who the fuck directed this dude to here, bro? Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, listen, man, ghost man. Ghost man, ghost man. Yo, I really appreciate you for pulling up, bro. Bro. <laughs> like I said, For this sure. was a long time coming, and we made it happen. Nah, you know what I'm saying? And it was, it was, it was everything I thought it would be plus more. I bro. swear to God, seriously, I swear like, to God, you gotta have me back up in this bitch and get into some ignorant shit. Yeah. I'm an ignorant ass nigga. Oh yeah, yeah, we go, we, we definitely gonna run it back. And I, I just appreciate you. Just I'm grateful, really, G. Yeah, you really gave a lot of insight and um, uh, backstory on Charlotte. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, which is dope, which I appreciate because yeah. you know Charlotte really took me in as a city. Yeah. Which I appreciate, you know, the Southern hospitality uh, moniker is real yeah, in facts. the South. And being from Maryland, we don't have that. It's a little bit, it's a sprinkle, but not really. I call it Northern hostility. So to come to Charlotte, being out here for three years now, and this city really taking me in yeah. because of uh, um, people from the city like you that just make it so welcoming, I, I truly appreciate that, man. Bro, Seriously. I appreciate you having me. You don't even understand. 
you don't even understand, G. I've been looking forward to this shit before we even put it together. It's like I, the, the universe just did the work, bro. What's up, fam? First and foremost, thank you for tuning in to this full interview. Make sure that you subscribe if you haven't already by clicking on the icon on the screen, or you can check out past interviews by clicking on the playlist on the screen as well for every day-by-day -day podcast interview that we've done so far. Thanks.